With us now is Dr. Orion Tal, President of USAT, and Professor Brandy. A pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, sir. How are you, sir? We haven't had the pleasure of having you on the program yet, so please tell us a little bit about what you teach at USAT. I teach uh, medical physics a little bit um, in assistance to Professor Einstein. Um, and in a certain sense, I fill in a lot of various gaps with reviews and uh, with an opportunity for students to think about a major project that uh, we're involved with, with the Caribbean Preventive Medicine Association. Uh, that project is uh, the development of handheld medical devices that we expect are going to begin to change the relationship between the patient and the physician over the next five years, probably worldwide. Uh, a lot of companies uh, with a lot of stature, such as Apple and Google and Microsoft, um, are beginning to explore medical, so-called medical apps, but program, programs that uh, you can have on a handheld device that can help you monitor your vital signs uh, on a daily basis and basically share that with your physician. How essential utilizing technology to stay abreast of what's going on out there, what's available, and utilizing it intelligently to further healthcare. Wonderful. What are your thoughts on that, sir? I think it's, it's uh, time for that. Uh, the iPhone has made its mark on, the, on society, and the handheld medical device is going to make its mark in the medical society. It will be absolutely essential because as we continue to expand, the world gets smaller with international travel, and you have to have a much greater array of resources at your fingertips, as it will, than you ever have had to have before because uh, someone can present to you in your clinical environment that may have a disease or an illness that's prevalent halfway around the world, and which you don't see every day. With the handheld medical devices, you'll have tremendous capacity to access the criteria for that disorder, the treatments, the protocols, things that you need to do to help that patient on the spot, and it doesn't matter as well where, as day -day where it is. Of uh, chronic, chronic and, conditions. And it's going to make every physician much more uh, available to treat the patients in a much more comprehensive manner. So unlike so many other teaching institutions and medical schools, USAT is very open-minded with regard to new technology and exploring them and implementing them. Absolutely, because technology is important. Uh, the research and technology is is absolutely essential for clinical me uh, medicine. We've been applying technology to medicine as long as I, I've been around on the planet, I believe. Uh, and now it's more essential than ever because the diagnoses are much more sophisticated. The diagnostic uh, uh, approaches, the instrumentation, is infinitely more sophisticated now than it's ever been in, in history and we have to make sure that we bring that t technology to the bedside, but we also have a physician that's trained to use that technology properly and to apply it. Dr. Brandy, I understand that you also teach anatomy and that this is a very important component of what occurs at USAT. Tell us about it. Yes, at USAT I am one of the instructors um, for human anatomy with cadaver dissection and we're very excited about uh, the approach that we have uh, because we're able to work with the Miami Anatomical Research Center where we utilize uh, donated bodies that are actually not preserved so they are actually closer to the type of uh, scenario that one would see in an operating room and uh, we practice uh, not just di human dissection but surgical approaches uh, to, to human dissection. So it actually is essential hands-on experience offered students and simply so important in order to save lives in the future. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, USAT is keeping abreast of uh, the latest technological developments right there at Miami Anatomical Research Center, uh, which is also a center utilized uh, uh, in parallel with uh, working physicians and 
orthopedic surgeons. Uh, so we get to see a little bit about what they do all the time as we are learning anatomy. We incorporate, you know, along with that, we incorporate some of the diagnostic procedures uh, that you would have to do as a first year resident. Things like lumbar punctures, chest tube insertions, uh, all sorts of things, diagnostic procedures that they will have to do later on. Suturing that is rarely taught in anatomy laboratory, but needs to be because it makes it a functional anatomy laboratory more than just, you know, reading the book and dissecting the, the parts, of identifying them, that sort of thing. It's functional as well as anatomic and, and uh, you know, traditional. It's very different. It's the most upstate, state-of-the-art uh, anatomy laboratory that I've ever worked in, and I've worked in some of the very best in the world prior to this. So we're proud of our anatomy program. It's one of the one of the you know the keynote areas of our of our instruction. Every student loves it. Many students want to repeat the laboratory sometimes ten or twelve times before, until they graduate, and that we find remarkable because that's quite different than what you see in most institutions. Well, USAT is contributing so enormously in furthering the careers of so many students, improving lives, and also treating patients wherever possible. I'm looking forward to seeing USAT advancing further and further as you are already. Thank you so much for being with us today, Thank sir. You. Thank, Thank you, you Dr. Tull. Yeah. I'll be right back.